All right, everyone, welcome to the Coyotes Coach Chats with Phil Housley. He's going to teach us all about the power play and how he thinks about it. Um, let's just go around and start off with intros. Um, but before we do, just remember, just like all of our other chats, you do have the option to ask some questions. So if you do have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A box and we will get to them at the end of the webinar today. Um, so I'll kick us off with intros. I'm Christina Kehoe. I'm a marketing manager here at the Arizona Coyotes. I'm also a Mites coach for the Arizona Kachinas and that's me. And Mike, if, Mike D, if you wanna go next. Yeah, Mike DeAngelis. I'm the uh, 16 uh, tier one coach for the Junior Coyotes. I also work part-time here with the, uh, the NHL team. I work for Shane and uh, the scouting department and uh, look for college free agents and uh, some other stuff that's going on with the Coyotes also I'm helping out with. Do you want me to go next, Christine? Yeah, go, yeah you go ahead next, Shane. <laughs> All right, I, I'm Shane Doan. I work with the Coyotes. My job is title is the Chief Hockey Development Officer. I actually work for Mike D, so he says it the other way around, but I work for him. Now, we, we work together. Mike and I work together, kind of helping out with some of the alumni stuff, but we actually all work for Christina because she's the one that runs all of this and makes sure everything happens. But uh, we really appreciate all you coaches coming on. I missed the last one. I was flying back, but I'm back now, and uh, we are excited to have Phil Housley on. And I'll let Phil kind of introduce himself, but just to guys give you a little bit of an idea of the pedigree of his not, he's going to talk about his coaching. Uh, I'd like to talk about what he did as a player. I got to play against Phil, which was fairly unique in the fact that uh, he is, he retired as the all time leading scorer for USA born hockey players. Um, he's now second. I think Mike McDaniel might've passed him. He finished with 1,232 points in 1,495 games and was inducted into the Hall of Fame and not like just like just the Hall of Fame, not like the Minnesota Hall of Fame, which he's inducted into, not the USA Hockey Hall of Fame, which he's inducted to, but just the Hockey Hall of Fame, which is uh, he has a very special ring that is very cool that every one of us players all strive to get. And it is... On top of that, he scored the most goals. He scored 30 goals, the youngest defenseman ever to score 30 goals, which everyone's talking about Kale McCarr and how great he is. I don't know if he's going to get to 30 this year, how he did it when he was 20 years old. Um, that's just a little bit about what he was as a player. And obviously, he'll tell you a little bit more how he got into the coaching and all that side. But um, that just gives you a little bit of the pedigree of how and he's probably the guy that assisted the most on Tamu Solani's 76 goals. If you ask anyone, he <laughs> is the biggest reason Tamu Solani got 76 goals as a rookie. Not for just, you know, just for saying anything, but it's, it's so impressive, everything he's done as a player. And in Sega 94, he might have been the best defenseman in the <laughs> Sega 94 uh, uh, hockey thing, so... Uh, over to you, Howie. Now you get to tell him about your hot, a little bit about your coaching. And thanks, Joe, for being on. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Actually, we'll probably go to Joe first and then let Howie close it up. Yeah, just real quick. Just Joe Bonnet, ADM uh, Regional Manager for USA Hockey. And just thanks again for partnering up with us there, um, with the Coyotes. And Mike, congratulations to you too, right? With the 16 team, with the Tier 1 Elite League. You guys had some success thanks. there. Thanks, Joe. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yep. And we'll turn it over to Phil. Thanks, guys. Well, first of all, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, great to be a part of this uh, um, power play uh, video meeting, but uh, I'd like to thank Sh uh, Shane for that awesome introduction. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm, I must owe you dinner or something right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but good afternoon, everybody. Um, you know, I grew up just, I just want to go back to the player thing just for a little bit, because I grew up in South St. Paul, Minnesota, played amateur hockey, played high school hockey, and then was drafted by the Buffalo Sabres. But my senior year in high school, I played for the world junior team and I had a two game tryout for the national team before I was drafted. And I don't think there's a lot of people that know that. And I made the team after the two game, uh, two, ga two game tryout and we were playing in uh, Tempere, Finland. And I was playing against Wayne Gretzky. And I was like, 
you know, one day you're in your school work in, in South St. Paul High School, and the next day I was playing against Wayne Gretzky. So uh, it was really a good measuring stick for me before Buffalo drafted me, and then I went to pro. And uh, obviously, you know, after my career, I was thinking about what I was going to do as I contemplating retirement. And actually, Lou Vero, uh, one of the founding fathers of USA Hockey, called me, and, and one of the coaches quit for uh, – the U18s and asked me to be a co-coach in November of 2003 and I said sure and uh, you know it was over in Hutfield Switzerland and uh, you know I just fell in love with the game you know I always had a passion but from being behind the bench was the closest place you could be to the action you could feel the highs and lows and the the emotions of the game and I said geez I could get used to this so I applied for Stillwater High School where I lived at the time and I became the high school coach in 2004. Uh, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, I learned a lot about patience as a high school coach. Um, you know, you think you can implement your systems and they'll be able to take, take off and stride right away, but it wasn't the case. You really had to, you know, slow down, explain things, have patience, uh, which taught me a lot because uh, as the nine years I coach high school, USA continually called me. I was a big part of the U18s as a consultant. Then I was an assistant coach at the World Juniors in 2007. And then I sort of grew into a more prominent role where, you know, I was the head coach in 2013. We won the gold medal in UFA Russia, uh, became an assistant coach on the national teams. And, you know, I was contemplating, you know, my family is a good, it was in a good spot. My kids were older and, uh, you know, maybe going pro. And uh, in 2013, when I was a part of the national team, we won the bronze medal as well. So, you know, I had some job offers and I became an assistant coach with uh, Nashville and had four years there, two as a head coach in Buffalo, which didn't work out so well, but I'm glad to be part of the Arizona Coyotes right now um, uh, and uh, really enjoying the, our team and our organization. So a little bit about myself. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and whenever you're ready, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay. I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, okay. Uh, today we're going to talk about the power play and, uh, um, as we go through the power play, uh, I'm going to focus a little bit on uh, mostly on breakouts because I think it's such an important part uh, of the power play. And just to give you an overall philosophy of, of, of the power play, obviously everybody says they need to be a shooting power play mentality and shooting creates. And I think that's something that we've got to get back to uh, in, uh, in our team, the Arizona Coyotes, I feel like we pass up uh, a lot of opportunities to get pucks on that. And I think that'll create more offense for us or second opportunities. But to me, power play has got to start with face-offs. Obviously, if you don't want to face off, you're going to have to break out the puck and, and be able to get into the zone. So we'll a little talk more about our breakouts, our entry. You know, we talked a little bit about face-offs and establishing possession. I will touch on a little bit about zone play and our one, three, one concept, the man in the middle or the bumper, the guy that's really important to relieve pressure and support the play. And obviously the power plays aren't very good unless you get, don't have good net front presence. Uh, one of the things that people talk about, and, and, and I think you see the better power plays that have been together for four or five years, they get into this spread look which is really a box plus one in the zone and then they can flow into the one three one uh that's that's a big important part of the power play and obviously uh outworking the the pk and you, you got to think that you know in two minutes uh, the power play is probably changing once uh, usually a lot of the teams have six killers they're changing you know every 20 seconds so we got to have that five on five mindset to, as well to be successful. Uh, just on our breakout philosophy, obviously the key concepts, you've got to be organized, you have to have timing and you have to come together as a unit. Uh, and you'll see in some of the diagrams and the video clips, what I'm talking about, everybody being on the same page, but 
Really important uh, to start out is your is your QB, the guy that's carrying that puck up the ice. And to me, it's so important that your timings has to be on as a, as a group coming up the ice. And if the timing's off, don't be afraid. You know, I, I know it's might you might get unsettled and you want to get going and you want to start attacking. But if you if you see that you don't have the proper balance and timing, hey, let's call everybody back because you want to do it right the first time. Let's take eight to 10 seconds off the clock to get everybody back because I think it's so important that you come together. And obviously you start with speed, you're getting faster through the neutral zone and you should be going full, full speed at the offensive blue line on entry now. And you'll see a lot of the, the clips that you want to have four guys at the line. It doesn't matter really what breakout you're using. Uh, and you, we'll talk about more of the breakouts, the, the five breakouts that I have that I'm going to show you. But every one you'll see at, at those breakouts, you got four guys entering on the, on the blue line because a lot of the teams that have good penalty kill four checks, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, you're going to need puck support and you're going to need kickout options. And I'll, and I'll talk about that in the diagram just to give you a better visual. Uh, one of the big things is doing your job what your route requires you to do. And everybody's got a, a job, they got a responsibility, and they also have to finish their routes because these are plays that whether you're getting a retrieval or you have to support on entry or you may have to rim a puck. Hey, a lot of times you'll see teams rim and puck. Sometimes the penalty kill four chuck does a tremendous job of put, making a stand at the blue line and you wanna keep your speed. So it's gonna be important important that you finish your route and you stay in your area until you get a solid position possession. Anytime we can surround and outnumber and, and, and support on, on both sides of the puck in the battle is going to be really important. And you'll see that, that we've got to get there fast, create the battle, stay in the battle so we can outnumber in the battle. And again, you must have a five on five approach. You need to outwork the PK. It's not one thing just jumping over the boards and it's going to happen. You have to have that mindset that you're going to go to work and it's really important to create momentum for your team. And obviously it's a privilege. I mean, you talk about kids growing up in today's game and, and not being entitled and earning it, uh, I think is really important. Uh, everybody should have a chance to play in a power play as you get more advanced. Obviously that's there's going to be units, but uh, one of the things for me and, and telling the guys on our team, it's like, because it, it's a privilege, you know, your teammate may have, you know, taken a punch to the head, may have gotten cross-checked. So uh, I think it's really important that you understand that when you jump over that, you know, your teammates are supporting you. Now it's time for you to support your teammates. What I'm going to talk about today are, are just uh, some really basic power play breakouts. And I don't know if anybody's, uh, you know, heard of a five pack or a double eight or a double drop or a four back stretch or a four back split. But when you look at the five back and you'll see a diagram that really all these other power play breakouts, they're sort of based off a of five back. And uh, whether it's a, a drop, you call it double eight or a drop, um, that's when the guys are coming in from behind and, and creating a lot of speed, but their routes will say similar, same thing with the double drop, the four back stretch and the four back split. You know, we'll have these, excuse me, as sort of our staples throughout the year, you know, you, you can make adjustments. I mean, there's different routes, there's, there's tweaks you can do to these breakouts, but for the most part, and if you watch the games today, you're going to see these breakouts. Uh, they're probably 75 to 80% of majority of everybody's teams uh, in their playbook. And we're no different. And if you do them properly and you have good timing, you're going to have a good chance to enter with possession. So when you look at a five back and also these breakouts, you can see up here in the upper left-hand corner right here, uh, it depends what the what you're facing as far as a penalty kill four check and when we get to the video clips I'll show you what a one one two or a one three which the majority of the teams use in the NHL of a one three where they got one four checker and three guys across the line or a moving box sort of self-explanatory where they're in a box formation as they move through the neutral zone but 
I think the, the obligation of the, the defenseman that's carrying the puck up is to draw their first defender. You can't step up out of the net and just make a pass to make a pass. You sort of got to invite that player in so you can try to beat that player with the first pass. And as you can see here, we got F1, F2. These guys right here are really important. Those are the guys that are going to be handling the puck. They're going to have the speed. And the F3 and D2 on the outside, these are called your kickout guys, where you, you make this first pass into F1 or F2, you draw a defender, now you can kick this puck out, and now you can finish your routes, which is really going to be important uh, when you look at the video clips. But they're mainly staying off the dot area on F1 and F2, F3 and D2. Their timing is to come with speed and sort of mirror those guys. And then when you attack off the brush, we want to try to stay inside the dots. And this is, could be a double eight, a double drop, even a four back stretch. We'll see a diagram uh, or, or four back split, but your kickout options are really important and they need to get some momentum as you're coming up the ice and you'll see in the diagrams because if they don't have any momentum, we'll only have two guys coming with speed uh, through the neutral zone. So we want in the five back, you want five guys coming with speed. Um, just one thing to note, if we were to attack off this side of the ice, F1 would still finish his route, but the weak side guy nice got a hold. And you'll see that in the diagram uh, and, and also off this, even if we rim the puck, we know where everybody is and you're going to have to finish your route, stay in your area uh, and make sure you, you can support the puck off a solid possession. So if you look at this right here, this is against the one, one, two, and you'll see the penalty kill four check coming up right here. There's their one, there's their one, and then there's their two. So a five back can work against a one, one, two, a one, three, or even a moving box where you can have the F2 jump into the pocket here. But because of this one, one, two, you can see the guys fill in their lanes. Now we've beaten that first guy with the first pass. It's really important. And you'll see their F1, draw their F1. Now their F2 is going to pressure that pass. So that's why it's important to have that kick out right there coming up the ice. Or you can go right and make that seam play. To the F2 right there. So again, there's the kick out. Now you get to enter. One thing that's really important, remember, if we enter on this side, this guy's got to hold, this guy's got to finish his route. And D1, we always say, who's the puck carrier, the quarterback, he's got to support puck side entry. So if this puck enters on this side, he's going to come and support this side because this guy and F2 are a part of the breakout. So you can see right there, we make a quick hit, really good try off the entry right there. And now it's going to be important that we get back to support, even though Schmaltzy fell right there, we would have had a guy, he would have been out here to support that puck and we were able to, they were able to exit the zone. Another look at it from a different angle. And sometimes the F1 will swing to the double, si the double swing shot side, it's, sorry, it's, He'll shade to the double swing side. So just to give you another visual of a one, one, two, that one will take the double swing side away. So there's their F2 that's going to pressure. F1's going to come. There's their D. And now we got to be able to kick this puck out and enter with speed. Really good job of guys finishing their routes. And now we should have a guy out here to be able to use. But I think because of the pressure of this puck carrier, we rim it around, but you see right away, when you stay in your area, we'll be able to relieve that pressure, make good little play right there to the bumper, which is really important that we talked about relieving that pressure and having that support off the entry, not only in the zone, but off the entry. And we get a pretty good look right there. Now, talking about a one three, you'll see sometimes teams will lock the bench side, Sometimes they'll lock the left side would be our right. Depends. A lot of the teams will lock their F2 would lock the bench side and their D and D and you'll have their F2 right here. So what works well against them? Still a five back and we'll talk about a double eight. But you can see if you come with speed against the one three, the one thing on a five back that's very visible is it allows the opposition to penalty kill to gap up on you. 
You know, if you don't have a stretch guy here to keep all these guys honest and push these guys back, they're going to gap up on you. So it's really important that your D1 really draws that first defender in so you can beat that guy. And now we can pick on these guys on the flanks. So you can see we draw that guy in and now we come and now we're coming with speed. And again, again, you're building speed down here. You're coming full speed at the line and you can see one, two, three, four guys at the line like I was talking about. And that's gonna be important that you have your kick out options, these guys driving through. And if we enter on this side, this guy will hold same opposite side. So we hit that guy coming with full speed, really get a good look there. And then really another good look right there. So you can see right here, Another five back against the one three, a different visual for you. Again, drawing that first guy in, really important. We got to get above him. You can see the kick out option. Hey, what did I say before? Sometimes teams do a really good job of getting on top of you. There's no play except maybe to hard rim it. I'm not a big fan of the cross corner dump, but because we had speed right here, we're able to get to this puck first. So again, finishing your route, and being available right here. So again, weak side guy held right there because we enter on this side, D1 support this side. Now you've got options off of this. Really good fake pump there. Good opportunity, good net front presence right there. And good job of converging on the net off that entry. So we talk about making adjustments, all right? You, you talk about, you know, a PK four check one, three, which I described earlier where they're F1 and they're, they're really doing a good job of holding the blue line. These are one of the little intangible things that you can do where you can send one guy out. So one of your F1 and F2, wherever the pass doesn't go, that guy's gonna take off just to keep other teams honest. And, and if they wanna hold the blue line, we can send speed at them. So Anaheim did a really good job against us, but now this came to F1, F2 is gonna take off. Cause you can see they're gapped up really well on us and we had a tough time. So we weren't trying to make them back off. And we set Keller in here for a cross corner dump. You know, it hops on them, but we get to the puck first. So now they're gonna think, are they gonna send them? Maybe we need to back off because they're gonna get to that puck first, but good job of everybody finishing their routes. Again, now we get into the bumper. There's your bumper. You got the point man. Here's your one, three, one right now. There's your look at it right there. Once we've established this out here as a three high, we don't need the bumper out here to support or the support because we've got total possession. Now he can start sinking to the net and, and have an opportunity. If we do put it at the net, we'll be able to outnumber him. Now he sees the flank get below the hash, now he can pop. We gotta put pressure on this guy right here to make a decision. We go low to high, quick shot here. Good net front presence. We need more of that from our team moving forward. Here's a goal four and a one, one, two. Good job of drawing the first guy in. Again, rimming the puck. So one guy's gotta hold here. And sometimes Phil, he'll hold and let the other player go ahead because he wants to get the puck on the weak side, but we do a good job of getting to this puck. We take a little quick look at it right there. That's our D1 who's trying to get back here. Does a, Phil does a really good job of buying time over here. And these guys are really important to relieve pressure, being able to you know buy some time for some people to get into their spots here. Good job, there's your one, three, one. Really good look here for their bumper or man of the middle and her flanks really climbing. And now we're gonna attack downhill. We don't connect there, but again, retrievals are so important. If you want to extend zone time, you need those guys to get on loose pucks. We get back into our one, three, one here. We get it up low to high. We're setting our routes. Now we take a good shot and really good net front presence right here by Andrew Ladd. He doesn't let that goalie see it. Phil shoots a uh, pass off the pads and we converge on the net. This is what I really like, outnumbering them at the net front three to one. And we pick up this rebound and score a big goal for us. So a little bit of what uh, uh, 
<clears throat> what we're talking about is the evolution from the breakout getting in the zone. Now, double eight, some people call it a drop. You can call it a double eight drop. That works really well against a one, one, two, and a one, three. Moving box, so, so not so much because usually they'll have a forward, forward, and a D, D. That's sort of their moving box right there. So it's tough because we're, we're trying to attack off the dot lane. So nothing really changes except F1 and F2 are coming late. And all the other all the other things stay the same. You got your kickout options. You guys, they still got to finish their routes down to their area down here, F1 and F2. So we'll just move right into it right away just to give you a visual. You can see our guys coming back. A lot of teams penalty kill. We'll try to get the puck out of this guy's hand by the blue line. And I think this is a very basic uh, breakout for any age group uh, for timing purpose and for speed. So it's really important that these guys back here who are getting the double late have a lot of speed coming up the ice and you can break down the penalty kill four check. You can see we get this puck back. Now we come with speed. Really like that the kick out guy, these guys are getting trying to get some momentum. They're first originally pushing these gout guys out to get room for the guys that are carrying the puck. So we kick that puck out right there. Finish routes, really good, really important. Now we can change sides behind the net. Now we get a really good entry. So you can see how important that, to be able to finish those routes right away and we get a good entry. Another here's against the one three, really good visual. You can see that to stop. Once this drop is made here, I'd really like to see Alice Galchenyuk to try to get some speed to match these guys' speed. So if we do have to use them, he'll have some momentum entering the zone. You can see we're coming out with good speed. See, now he's stopped. Even if he's going a little bit like half speed, he will have some momentum to make a play at the line here. Now our only option is we can reverse it on entry, but we finish, we finish our routes, we change sides, and it's so important that you finish your routes because they can't cover everybody. They got four guys. We should be able to pick them apart with our five here. And again, we get a rim out and we get possession right there. Just another double eight. Give you a different visual of the speed coming up. Get that speed. We hit that kick out over here. So we got through on their one three where we got the zone and we went right this way. Cause sometimes teams are gonna try to push you from behind. Really good entry right there and just good support off it right here. Again, there's that bumper right there. Once he starts moving here, he's gonna move up. But once we start estab establishing this, he can start sinking to the net. Really good shot right there. So here's a really good breakout that I had uh, two years ago about just speed and trying to pick apart their one, three. You can see their one, two, three, and they're, sometimes they cheat to the flank side. Really good job of coming up the ice and finishing a play. Uh, good job. Here's another one right here this year. Again, I told you, it, sometimes you're not always going to be able to carry the puck in. There's their one, three. They got good gaps on us. And now they back off because our kickouts got momentum, but still we got to rim it. Good job for the fill the hold the weak side. And then again, it's all about getting these pucks and retrievals. Staying in your area, knowing your releases. That's an automatic play right there. So he knows he's getting pressure unless this guy communicates a little chip. He knows he's going to rim this puck because he knows he's going to be there for him. Now we're just moving the puck really good here. Very quick, we try to suck this guy down here. We get low to high. He should be setting his route, getting ready to attack. But we get the ice into the middle of the ice where we get them into an eye formation. Now we'd be able to tack off the flanks in our one, three, one. They do a good job of shutting that down right there. And now the bumper comes out in the play here. We try the backside, it's not there. Fake pump, quick shot right off the bar. Another shot mentality. We need to do this more um, as a team right here. 
Good bumper again. Just the movement, you can see the flow of the 131. Really good bumper support right there. Really good bumper. You see as he's in trouble, we got a guy releasing and guy coming support. We kick that puck down and now we hit the weak side because they're trying to be very aggressive. So really good right there. Another goal four on a drop. Just give you some visuals. You can see our flanks. I'd like to have Andrew get a little bit more speed here. And he would have a little bit more speed to kick that puck out. And a lot of the times it's just hard work. It's just winning these puck battles, just like your five on five mindset. We get that puck to the flank, good net front presence, shot mentality, whack away with huge goal for us right there. So double drop, just an extension uh, of the double eight, but it's really about coming across and coming underneath. We call it drop and cross or a double drop. So it, it has just a little bit of element in there of trying to pick on their F1, especially against the 1-3 who does a really good job of sniffing out where the puck's gonna be and striking on that drop. So I'll let this play out. All things considered stay the same, off the five back, double eight, just to give you a visual where you can sort of tweak your breakouts, which is not that much of a, a tweak, you're just getting one guy coming over the other, just to tr try to confuse the penalty kill four check. So this one comes up here. We're a little bit late because we're just getting a change from Schmaltzy here, but the same philosophy where he comes across, and now he drops it, and now he skits into the same route here. Really good kick out right here. We get a reverse on entry. Good job, weak side guy holds. We get a good look right off the entry right there. We continue this play, another reverse. A lot of teams right here, and I'm not trying to take this too much. A lot of teams will try to force with their F1, and they got this F2 rotation out here. It's a little advanced, and I know this is the NHL level, so bumpers got to read off that, and our weak side point has got to stay in high ice. We can break that down. You can see right there, he's available. We should have our bumper right here because their F1 is going to try to return. He's trying to try to pressure. And there's a space right here that we can take it and kick it in, kick it out to the weak side flank. Just to give you a visual, good job by our bumper there to be available. Another visual of a drop and cross. I was telling you, their F1 and a 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, which most teams use, are going to try to get the puck out of our puck carrier's hands by the blue line. You can see he's going to come across. We're trying to pick on this guy right here because you can see they've gaffed up really well against us. So we're trying to change our point of attack. So we get that kick out right there. Phil should have kept going here. He does that sometimes, but just a good job by everybody else to, you know, support this puck off entry. We get it low to high, we get it to the weak side D, and now we'd be able to enjoy that nice entry we just did. Another visual of it, sometimes we have to use the relays here. The relay is the kickout guy, we call him, in case the penalty kill four check attacks from behind or he has a good angle on our QB or D1 puck here, we can use this to drop the puck. So those guys are still important here on the breakout. You can see Fisher now, he sees that we're dropping, now he's getting some speed, which is really good. There's the cross and drop, really good job. Again, really good entry. It's just to really give you a visual of how it all comes together. Four back stretch or four back split. This works really well against a neutral zone moving box. And what I mean about that, if you picture a forward, a forward, a D and a D, that's their moving box. And they'll be coming back like this as four. So we've got to have somebody come into the pocket here and attack that pocket, whether it's a four back split where we get two guys swinging and he's gonna pop in there and he'll be on the outside lane so we can pick on that one forward. He's gotta make a decision, who is he gonna take? <coughs> oh. <clears throat> or four back stretch where we can just beat them. If we can beat them before they get in their structure, it's a really good breakout. So you can see that F D one's gonna carry the puck, he still has, the F2 over here, excuse me, the D2 over here, all right? And a stretch guy here. 
We talk about a stretch guy, even a four back stretch or a four back split is to try to push these D back. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we move forward. You, he may be able to come across this way or this way to support where that puck's going. So we'll just get right into it. So this is a four back split versus a moving box. You can see their F1, he's coming up. Their F2 is gonna be coming back and you can see they're getting in this box formation, but we're gonna try to pick on this forward right here with the four back split. Now he's got the option to hit this guy in the pocket or hit this guy in the outside. And now you can see our stretch guy, which is Krauser come to be a part of that breakout right here. Again, you can see four at the line. All these breakouts, you see four guys entering on the blue line, which is really, really important to have support, finish your route, quick support on entry. So we make this play right here, a good quick hit. I mean, it was a good quick hit off the entry. Here's a four back split again. There's their F1 popping into the middle. So that's gonna try to draw this guy right here. If he was the overplay this guy, we're gonna pass him. But if he overplays this guy, we'll have this area to the attack. So we chose the outside guy. He's got to start, still finish his route right there. Good job right there. You can see we're all trying to get in place. Now we can work our play here. We get to the middle of the ice, which I think, especially at a young age, getting this puck into the middle of the ice is going to be important, not only at the NHL level, amateur, high school, college, because it puts pressure on these guys right here. If they can't really come and try to force you, you're going to pick a side here, or you're going to pick this side, which is going to put a lot of pressure. But what we do from this puck right here is really important. So we have a little movement. We're going to attack downhill. Now we get the puck back. Now we get over and back. Okay, it doesn't happen. Again, our bumper now that we've established that three high should be popping here. He's got to do the work. He's got to do the work. And we chose to take that shot right down the gut, which is really good. Take these shots all the time. He's going to converge. Now we outnumber at the net. Here's another four back split that we get a goal on. This comes off a change, but the, the theory is the same. We get this puck into the pocket right here. Now we're able to kick it out. Everybody's driving through to their, uh, their spot right here. And now we've got this one, three, one look right here. You've got seams, you can come back here. You've got your low play to a bumper. You might be able to attack the net himself if this demand's pretty high. We chose to go back up high with it. They're giving him that lane, so he's going to take what's given right there. Really good shot by Cam Deneen right here. So four back stretch against the one three. It's not any different, a little different four back split. So again, it's against the one three. Against the box right here, you'd have this guy popping into the pocket. But now it's a one three. We can stay wide here. And a lot of teams will try to shade to the double swing side. We make a good play off it right here. And now we get a good solid entry. You can see there are three guys right here. Once you've, once you've beaten that first guy and you come at these guys with speed, they'll get their stick out there, but they're going to try to take their momentum deep because they don't want to get burned. And we do a good job of getting that entry right here. Really good luck right there. Would have liked to have Barrett sitting right over the goalie's eyes right there. So important. So here's a four back stretch. Again, Sort of like in a one, one, two, we turn it on right away and now we bypass them. So the element of surprise is always great here, but again, we have to chip this puck. And again, we got to win a battle, but he finishes his route. He finishes his route. He holds on the weak side. Now we can be able to work our play here. We get out in their eye formation. We're going to attack. And again, this is a really good example of net presence right over the goalie in our bumper and the layer position right there. This goalie never sees the puck. So um, I hope that uh, is helpful moving forward, especially with the breakouts, because if you don't have good face-off guys, you're going to have to go 200 feet to go get a puck. And you're going to have to have a plan to have a breakout, because I know in some games, sometimes the penalty kill does a good job and you can see that the guys are getting frustrated 
At least we have a plan. If we have to start dumping pucks in to back them off, so be it. And we're going to have to go down and win a battle and get dirty and try to come up with a puck. But if you have a plan and you can get entry, now you can work your plays. But if you don't have a plan and you have poor timing, it's going to be tough to get in the zone. So hopefully this will help you moving forward uh, as far as your power play breakouts and a little bit of the one, three, one, didn't want to spend a lot of time on that because it, that's a whole different animal about all the nuances, what goes into a one, three, one. I tried to touch it a little bit, but uh, hopefully that will help you moving forward. Thank you so much, Phil. Um, we're going to start to kick off the Q and A, if that's okay. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. How frequently do you rotate these power play drills into your practices or and how do you well, determine that's that? a great question because we try to, we try to, uh, do as many power play uh, practices as we can with time limited. I mean, you know, the, the grind of the schedule dictates that, you know, if we have to work on our five on five game, which is so important, especially for our team, you know, sometimes the power play gets the, you know, the end of the, uh, the under practice, which is, doesn't make it uh, unique because usually the ice is, is, uh, is, is pretty terrible. And, um, so what we try to do is we try to tra take out both units and just work on five on O options without resistance. So at least they're getting touches, at least they're getting some plays, they're getting some shots. And I think it's important we could take 10 minutes before practice when the ice is really fresh and they can move it and be crisp with their puck movement. And then at the end of practice, if we just have to work on in zone play, uh, we'll work on in zone play. Awesome. Um, the next question is, what methods have you used to get this from your high school teams? Drills, concepts, concept discussions? I think there's a couple of things you can do. In shooting drills, you can work in some power play drills, the uh, power play shooting drills within your shot drills. And um, as far as high school, I think you got to dedicate, I mean, you have a long week of practice. You got to plan out your your days of, you know, maybe Monday's a work day. You're gonna, you know, get some conditioning, some skill work. Tuesday, you might touch on the power play. You know, Wednesday, you might just do a little bit of power play because I'm just speaking on behalf because we used to play Thursday and Saturday in Minnesota. So you sort of got to make time. Um, and I think it's so important. I, I, we will even do, uh, uh, you know, power play practice on the day of the game if we have a pregame skate at, at, in the morning just to get the touches and get the mindset going. But I think it's so important, such an important part of your 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 game. Um, this one is kind of something that I think a lot of coaches here in Arizona, actually probably all around everywhere <laughs> have to face, but um, a mass majority of my team practices are shared or half ice. How do you recommend working on the power play D zone breakout with half ice? Well, I think you can start with a half ice breakout and finish your routes where you would do on a full ice and then let the power play finish their routes Maybe you change sides with the puck and you rim it out and then you take your penalty kill on that side. So you give their routes to them. They can feel it. They can do it. Maybe not at a high speed, but then once they make that play behind the net and they rim it back out to the D and now it's on. Now the penalty kill, you blow the whistle. Now you're playing your power play. So, I mean, that's nine players right there. You can have two units of power play and PK. You can share that. Uh, where you have nine guys, ladies going or guys going at one time, the other ones would rest and then you would bring that other unit in. So there's a, a lot of ways you can work to make sure everybody's getting a, a feels, it feels important, whether they're on the penalty kill and the power play. If you don't have the strongest skaters, is it better to rim it in or cross corner dump in? I'm a big proponent of not cross corner of the puck because what you do is uh, unless there's a plan in place, like you saw that one five back fly where we know we're going there with speed, but I think rimming the puck is probably, I'd say at this level, uh, harder for the defending team to get to. I'm just thinking about if you're playing against a team and you cross corner uh, a puck, I think that D is going to get the first touch on that puck. So maybe a soft chip to support, where you're coming up, where you can have 
that that other four coming across if you kicked it out and you could soft chip it and win that race to that puck but cross corner dumps in my opinion are are tough ones to get to um do you have any advice for coaches who are coaching younger players as they're starting to just teach the power play well my advice is to make sure everybody gets a piece of it i mean uh I think it's important that they all develop um, because younger players develop uh, at different uh, faster than other players. So that doesn't mean that the skill level is going to be even better or worse. So I think the biggest thing is make sure everybody feels part of it because I think it's the best way to, you know, touch the puck, get your touches, feel a part of something about your team. And I mean, those things will work their way out as the ages get, you know, higher, the, you know, you're going to get, you know, into more competition, some stiffer teams, you got, you know, the, the your coyotes, you got high school, those things will work their way out. But uh, being able to understand power play and penalty kill is important at a young age. Awesome. Um, I think we are all out of questions. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Phil. Um, for all the coaches in the call today, we are going to be talking about the other side of this, the penalty kill on our next call with Coach Mario. Um, so join us on March 21st. It's another Monday call, um, also at 530. And this call is recorded. We will have it posted on the Arizona Coyotes YouTube channel for your review. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Thanks, Howie, really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's one of those things that it's becoming more and more important in the game just because there's so many penalties. Yeah. Where, <laughs> and, and it's the difference in most games and for you to be able to just share some of your, your knowledge of it as being probably the premier guy is you and cough and the guys that when I, I don't mean to age you, Howie, but when I was growing up, you and cough were the guys that kind of changed. I think it's like, it's probably Bobby Orr, Paul Coffey and Phil Housley are the guys that changed the game um, offensively and to have a guy that could run the power play and do everything that you would do. And now to listen to you coach it is, it's so special um, to see the way you see the game and to give us your views on the, on the PP. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Shane. All right. Bye, everyone. Have fun.